Morning, Sue. How are you? Hello, David. I'm fine. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us who you are? Okay, so my name's Sue Abdullah. I'm a senior lecturer on the BSc Nursing programme for the adult branch and I work predominantly with the stage one students, which are the first years. And do you want to give us a brief overview of your career if you can, so far? <laughs> okay, so I actually qualified 24 years ago this month and I started my career working at Burton Hospitals on an LD rehab ward. From there I moved over to Derby and went straight into A&E and I worked there for five years but whilst I was working there I was also part-time involved in education and then I became a clinical nurse educator and did that for more years than I care to remember and from there moved into the dementia lead nurse role at the Royal Derby Hospital which is a job that I have to say out of all my clinical practice is the job that I've enjoyed the most out of everything that I've done. Uh, it was absolutely amazing job and then from there, I moved to the University of Derby about three years ago. Is it only three years? Yes. Gosh, feels like longer. <laughs> Why? Because you're so established okay, and, you know, yeah, no, because you're, you, you're perfect in the role, that's brilliant. So What you um, mean is not bossy. Yeah, but you know I that I need that. <laughs> I, like, I like being bossed about, it's fine. Um, so can you tell me about one silly mistake you made as a student nurse or a newly qualified nurse? Okay, so it would be as a, I wasn't particularly newly qualified. I'd been working in A&E not that long actually. So I'd been qualified about, I don't know, maybe 18 months, something like that. And I was working a night shift and I was on the minor injuries area and we'd got a young guy come in who was extremely, extremely drunk and quite belligerent and quite aggressive. And he'd been involved in a fight and he'd sustained a, a laceration over his eye. So I told him that what we'd do is we would glue it. So I took him into the into the cubicle and uh, settled him down, talked him through what I was going to do and just as I was about to put the glue over the laceration he moved and I ended up sticking his eye together. <laughs> Needless to say he wasn't very impressed. Okay. I completely freaked out. Um, having said that, the, the nurse in charge was absolutely absolutely brilliant with me and could see how this guy had been anyway before I'd taken him in for his treatment and um, although I felt terrible about it and was apologizing profusely and I got abused mightily by this young guy it all turned out okay in the end because we managed to unstick his eye we managed to apply the glue in the right place and discharged him home and sent him on his way I've also got another funny story to tell you about when I worked in A&E and this is about a mistake that I made but again I was working in minor injuries unit on a Sunday afternoon and came in from Blue Peter and um, he'd injured his finger so I went in to apply uh, a bandage to it um, and I made some comment about uh, sticking it in place with double-sided sticky tape and sticky back plaster he wasn't very impressed <laughs> so yeah note to self Celebrities are not that fun when you see them in a &E. It stuck with me always. I just, I thought it was really funny. I was tittering away to myself. And I looked at his face and he looked like he was stuck in a lemon. So I was thinking, yeah, okay, maybe not. So going on from your silly mistakes, what do you think is your proudest nursing achievement? I think it has to be working as a dementia lead nurse. So when I took over from the previous dementia, lead nurse her role was very very different to mine she was much more operational so she was working alongside the patients all the time seeing them on the wards and assessing them when I was when I was recruited into the post that the job I was asked to take a much more strategic view and so I spent sort of three years working really really hard to to basically put dementia friendly environments in place to change nursing practice to completely you know revamp the whole sort of way that that the trust delivered and looked at dementia care and when I left we'd got a five-year dementia plan in place and you know going around the wards on my last day and and seeing the activities that were taking place and seeing the new roles that that we'd introduced as a result of my of my job was just really really amazing actually and, and I have to say brought a tear to my eye and and I would say that yeah definitely that's the thing that I'm proud of. 
And it's definitely one of your passions, isn't it? You know, when we're when we're teaching, when we're talking to students about it, it's something that that really sort of sparks your passion and and you know you yeah, can see it means it. Definitely. But, you know, I also think as well, David, that, you know, people with dementia, although they've got very individual specific needs, you know, if you get it right for a person with dementia, you'll get it right for any other patient as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I know lots of people don't necessarily see dementia as, as their specialty. They don't necessarily see it as something that's important to them. But, you know, there's no doubt about it. No matter what area of nursing you go into, you will meet a person with dementia, whether that's a young person with early onset, whether it's somebody in their 90s who has dementia. And, you know, you've got to be able to have those tools to meet their needs. Um, and, And for me, it's not acceptable to say, it's not relevant to me, it's not my field of nursing, because actually it really is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So if you weren't a nurse, what would you be doing? Oh my God, this is where we take up more than six minutes. I have got so many things that I'd want to do. <laughs> um, I'd want to be a yoga teacher. I'm just in the process of um, going through a Reiki diploma, so teaching myself how to be a Reiki master. Um, I would want to be a baker or a chef. Um, my biggest desire is to own a antique shop with a bookshop in one side and a cafe at the back by the coast so okay. you know not with, a room, with a room to do yoga and reiki and all of that sort of stuff absolutely as well. right out the back yeah. yeah with a meditation room built in there you yeah. go yeah okay that's got it covered then yeah it ticks everybody's box if it ticks all of mine anyway and a few other weirdos that maybe are out there that actually want to come along and join in <laughs> okay so finally the final question uh, what's your guilty pleasure <gasps> oh t- too many to mention my current one um is probably watching blue bloods on sky atlantic i have a little bit of a thing for Donnie Wahlberg currently that will change i've no doubt okay. yeah okay fair enough <laughs> And one other, which I really, really shouldn't mention, but reading the celebrity pages in the Daily Mail online. Oh God, really? Yeah. I used to like you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't read the news. I go to the Guardian for the news. I don't really like the, the fascist stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I'm not going to speak to you anymore because, uh, you know, reading the celebrity gossip from the Daily Mail is, uh, is, is just too much. Um, I think we've learned some stuff about you, Sue. Um, <laughs> that maybe you didn't know before. Some good, some just appalling. Um, and uh, now it'd be really good to be back at work when it, seeing our students and, and uh, sort of teaching face to face and things. So. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to welcoming them all anyway in the September cohort. So Definitely. yeah, they'll get to know us all. They'll get to know how crazy we all are in our own very special yeah. ways. Absolutely. So, yeah, it will be good. It's been brilliant speaking to you. I'll see you soon. All right, thank you. All right, thanks. Take care. Bye.